Hi, uh, this is Peng Wang from University of Virginia. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our recent work, uh, Graph-Based Extractive Expander or Recommendation, uh, which I also work with Ren Jingcai and Hongling Wang. Uh, nowadays, recommendations are everywhere in our life. Well, in the research community, people not only interested in improving the recommender's performance, but also want to provide uh, explanations for recommendations, since by providing explanations, the recommender system can gain more trust from users, and also the explanation can help the user to make decisions uh, when she need to compare multiple items. There are many type of explanations, including user-based and item-based, and also uh, feature-level explanations. In this work, we are interested in generating natural language explanations based on the historical reviews. Uh, existing works basically fall into three types. Uh, there are basically a uh, template-based method, generation-based method, and instruction-based method. Template-based method need to fill in the slots in some predefined templates using item attribute word. Uh, this kind of model typically need to predict user's opinion toward items attributes using matrix word tensor factorization. Generation-based method uh, leveraging on LP models such as RNN or BERT and trained on large-scale review test, uh, test data set uh, to predict what is the possible uh, review that a re user would give to an item. Uh, Extraction-based method uh, select uh, extraction-based methods select representative sentences from the target item's existing review and uh, combine them together to become an explanation. Uh, all these three types of methods have their pros and cons. So for template-based methods, although they can usually generate uh, precious and reliable results, the robotic style makes the explanation convey less information and therefore it will be uh, less appealing to users. Uh, for generation-based methods, uh, although they can generate human written uh, style explanations, they usually suffer from generating generic content to feed the overall data distribution in the data set. And this makes the user hard to differentiate among uh, uh, explanations given on multiple items. Uh, you can see on the right side of the slides, the highlighted example here is a result of SEER, uh, which is a generation-based method. You can see that the model uh, turns out to generate some generic sentences like the location was great, the hotel was very nice, and this makes the generated explanation uh, less personalized. And, and also we uh, have less control to this kind of generation-based model. It may even generate some uh, sentences with counterfactual information. Uh, for extraction-based methods, uh, as they extract sentences directly from the existing reviews, uh, they are reliable and also have very good readability. However, if we extract sentence on the uh, sentence level, which means that uh, we use the sentence in reviews on the target item to construct an explanation, we will then need to face the sparsity issue between user item pair and sentences. And this will make it uh, difficult to learn the relationship between user item pair and sentence, and thus uh, result in a personalization problem. So uh, considering the previous pros and cons of this kind of uh, three different types of method, our goal is to generate easily perceivable, reliable, and personalized explanations. We choose to use the extraction-based method uh, and select the sentences from users' historic reviews and items existing uh, reviews to construct uh, explanations. The reason that we choose to use the extraction-based method is that it has the advantage to generate reliable and perceivable uh, explanations. The biggest remaining problem is how to effectively model the relationship between user item pair in sentences so that we can construct the personalized explanations. 
uh, and in other words to uh, and in order to uh, address this problem, uh, we propose to construct graphs and utilize uh, graph neural network to select sentences. Uh, okay. Uh, before jump into the details of our method, I would like to first share some high level motivations, which are actually based on some difficulties or say problems we need to solve. So the first difficulty is that uh, is how to model the relationship between uh, user item and sentences. Uh, we think that there are two ways. So the first is to use the co-occurrence relationship. Uh, however, sparsity is a very big issue here. And you can see that the sparsity ratio is really small on the data set. Uh, and this suggests that it is unrealistic to use some traditional methods such as tensor factorization. Uh, so to, to, to solve this problem, uh, we propose to use graphs. We also, uh, we also use a second way to model the relationship between uh, user item and sentence, which is to leverage on the feature level inter uh, interactions by using a uh, deep and cross neural uh, network. Uh, the second difficulty is how to extract sentences which are not generic and also uh, cover more target attributes. Uh, in order to select sentences which uh, match the target attributes, we combine the task of sentence prediction with attribute prediction and use uh, multi-test learning. In order to construct explanations with uh, less duplicate content. We also add an uh, integer uh, linear programming post-processing to synthesize explanations. Uh, with this in mind, let's take a look at the detail for model. So first, to address the sparsity issue between user item pair and sentence, uh, we introduce attribute as a bridge to connect user item and sentence. We construct a heterogeneous graph uh, with four types of nodes. Specifically, each user item pair corresponds to an individual graph. Uh, each graph is a, consists of a user node, uh, an, uh, an atom node, and several sentence nodes, which is a union of user side sentences and item side sentences. And finally, several uh, attribute nodes, which connect user item and sentence. And currently, we only use the edge to represent the co-occurrence relationship between uh, user and attribute, item and attribute, and also atom and sentence. There is uh, no weight on each edge. Uh, the figure on the right side uh, shows a simplified example of the graph. You can see that uh, attribute one is connected with sentence one, uh, and sen also sentence two, since these two sentences both contain the word beta, and attribute two is also uh, only connected with sentence three, since uh, only this sentence can uh, have the word golden. Uh, we used a graph attention network to learn the dependence between these four different types of nodes, and to also to capture the semantic uh, of attributes and sentences. We use pre-trained globe and BERT to initialize the attribute and sentence node embedding. Uh, instead of the co-occurrence co co relationship among user item and sentences learned by the graph neural network, uh, from another perspective, feature crossing models, uh, the indirect dependence uh, among them on top of the graph representations. Uh, deep and cross network has been widely discussed and used in recent CTR prediction models uh, by explicitly modeling feature lab interaction between user embedding, item embedding, and sentence embedding. Uh, we utilize DCN to integrate user and item output uh, from the JAT uh, into the sentence prediction layer. This design uh, helps our model to realize better sentence prediction. And if you are not familiar with uh, DCN, it is a combination of deep network and uh, cross network, where the deep network can be a very simply uh, multi-layer perception and the 
cross network is a stack of multiple cross layers where each layer can be viewed as a weighted uh, outer product of the inner uh, input embedding and with the learned hidden embedding. So with this structure, the ECN can model the higher order feature level interaction for an input uh, feature embedding. Uh, since the task is basically a, classific a classification task, which means that we can set a ground truth sentence uh, with label one and the other sentence with uh, label zero, we can uh, first use general classification laws such as cross entropy laws. Uh, however, based on our observation, we found that candidate sentences could, uh, could be very similar to ground truth sentences. If you take a look at the table here, the candidate sentence in the first line is saying that the, the staff is very courteous and friendly, while the ground truth sentence says that the staff was very accommodating, pleasant, and friendly. This pair of sentences have uh, nearly the same meaning. So therefore, we believe that uh, simply use zero and one label might hurt the model, since uh, this similar sentence will have nearly the same edge connection uh, with the attribute nodes, and therefore their output node representation after GAT should be very similar. Uh, the model will get confused if it is forced to give two very similar embedding uh, significantly different labels. Uh, therefore, we propose to assign each candidate sentence with a soft label according to its sentence similarity with, uh, with the ground truth sentence and then use the pairwise laws. Uh, also, uh, attribute prediction is closely related with sentence prediction. This is because the candidate sentence with higher relevance score uh, always contain attributes that also appear in the ground truth sentence. So therefore, in order to select sentence that can cover target attributes, we also have this multitask learning to combine the attribute prediction with sentence prediction. And for attribute prediction, we apply uh, binary cross entropy loss. Uh, so up to now, uh, assume you have a perfect model. The top predict sentence should be quite similar to the ground truth sentences, and they would also be very similar to each other. Uh, recall that our goal is to generate perceivable test. So we should make sure that the selected sentences are both relevant and also less repetitive. To realize this objective, uh, we construct an integer linear programming to find the optimal solution of the uh, of this uh, objective. So finally, by integrating all these previous parts, we come up with our whole model, which we name as uh, screener. Uh, we compare with method uh, for uh, these five baselines. So the first two are uh, generative based method, and the uh, next one, the uh, next three one are uh, extraction based method. Uh, we use blue and watch to evaluate the quality of the generated explanation. Uh, we use two popular used real world review data sets, which are Rebeer and Trivializer. And based on the result, we can see that uh, our proposed method can outperform baselines under every blue metric. So since blue is a precision based metric, this shows that where method can select pre, uh, precious sentence that match the target user's ground truth review on the target item. Uh, we can also see that our method also outperforms baselines under every large metric, uh, which means that since large is a recall based metric, this shows that our method can select sentence uh, that match more content with the ground truth review. Uh, we also measure the quality uh, of the attribute prediction in the uh, generated explanations. Uh, result shows that uh, our method outperform all the baselines on recall and F1 score. This indicate that our method can uh, indeed output explanations with uh, not only pre attribute but also distinct attributes. Uh, we also develop the ablation analysis to study the importance of each component. Uh, specifically, we develop four variants of war solution by removing each important submodel, including the GAT, the BERT, uh, DCN, and LP. 
uh, the comparison against these four variants shows that all components contribute to the performance of war solution. So here uh, is a case study of our proposed method. You can see that our method uh, construct explanations can uh, match some very uncommon attributes with the ground truth, such as the uh, roasted chocolate or the hot top. Uh, this example here also verify that our method can construct explanations uh, which are very personalized and also informative. So uh, to sum up, in this work, we propose a graph-based extractive solution for uh, expandable recommendation and compared to previous method, where method can generate more uh, reliable, easy, perceivable, and also more personalized explanations. Uh, the, expand, uh, the experiment shows that the integrate heterogeneous information about user item attributes and sentences using the graph structure can model the feature level uh, interaction among uh, uh, and also explicitly model the feature level interaction among user item and sentence embedding uh, help for model to generate uh, this uh, very good explanations. And also using the LP post-processing can uh, enable us to select high relevant and less repetitive sentence and also give us more control of the uh, expander. And what's more, uh, we also believe that the combination between uh, modeling structure, a structural co-occurrence co relationship using the graph and also the feature lab interaction using deep cross network can also uh, shed light on other fields where uh, people need to deal with multiple level interactions between different features. Uh, there are some future work. So first is that current graph only use edge with binary weight. Uh, clearly, using some continuous attributes such as tf idf score uh, could also be useful to represent the uh, relationship between user attribute and also item attribute and item uh, between sentences. Uh, another possible working direction is to combine with uh, generation-based and extraction-based method together to solve this kind of co-star issue. Uh, thanks. And I would like to take questions if there are any. Thank you very much, Bing. Uh, we are at time. Uh, I'll ask a very quick question and then we'll move on to the next talk. Um, how is the set of attributes generated? Oh, uh, it's generated by using uh, some tools. Uh, these tools can select uh, uh, attribute and opinions from uh, the test is the tools uh, developed by previous work. Okay, thank you very much.